Hello, Jim Lynn here. Welcome to episode 13 of Mr Lynn's Workshop. It's time to work in the wing spars again. Now, if you remember episode 9, we finished up the rebates at the end of the wing spars and we also cut them to length. Uh, this time we've got a little bit of chamfering to do on the inner edges of those rebates, just required by the instructions. And then we'll look at uh, gluing on the doubler plates in the rebates using some uh, Aerolite glue. So, get your brew and have a look at this. Okay. Yeah, here. okay, have a look at this situation for a minute. Um, what we have here is uh, me using a chisel. Anthony is holding a plane blade in a certain position on the end of one of the wing spars. Don't worry, the blade's blunt. Uh, we made sure of that so we wouldn't get cut by accident. Uh, and what that does is with the chisel held in the way I'm holding it, the tip of the chisel is now pointing down into the spar, but at a precise angle. So now you've got this scene in mind, let me show you some diagrams to show what we're trying to achieve here. Have a look at this diagram first. I made it using a photograph of the end of one of the wing spars. Um, position A is where the rebate drops down from the upper surface, 1.6 millimetres. Position B is a, a line 10 millimetres from that, and that's where the chamfer needs to start. Um, position C is where we're going to put a jig on it, and that's going to be the plane blade, which is 3.7 millimetres thick. Now, how do we work out D? We'll have a look at this diagram. The dotted line um, shows a constant slope that runs from the bottom of A right up to the corner of the blade at C. Uh, we know A, B and C dimensions, so with a bit of math we can work out what D is in order to maintain that constant slope. It's a very simple ratio formula. It's uh, D equals C divided by A times B. And we input some numbers, 3.7 divided by 1.6 times 10. D equals 23. So then with the tip of the chisel at point E and the middle of the chisel resting on the edge of the blade, we can maintain a perfect chamfer angle. Nice. Anthony's making marks 23 millimetres out from our chamfer start line, which he'll then just join those dots and that will give us our jig position line. With Anthony holding the chisel blade in place, I apply pressure right at the very tip of the chisel and as I push forward the chisel is prevented from going too far by the block that we've clamped in place. This is butted right up against the vertical wall of the rebate. Once I've worked my way along to the far side, I'm going to start back towards the near side, but this time a little bit closer to the chamfer line. So eventually I can put the tip of the chisel right on the chamfer line uh, and make that cut right down. And this will give us pretty close to the perfect chamfer angle that we're looking for. So once we unclamp the stop block we can have a look at our results. It's not 100% perfect. Um, there's the odd ridge or two here and there, so with Anthony holding the jig in place, I'm just tidying those up. Anthony just smooths everything up with some sandpaper. And that's basically it. We then repeated that on the other four spars for a total of eight chamfers. Right, Anthony, what, what have we got here? Lift that tin up. This one? Yeah, without turning it. What, what is it? Try and turn the camera. Aerolite 306 powder. Flammable, harmful if swallowed, irritating to eyes and skin, wear protective gloves. Good, we've got that. So, what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to glue the um, gusset plates onto the side of the spars. Gusset plates? 
Yeah, well, is that what they're called? Yeah. That's what they're called. I think we need a different name. That sounds more rude than I would like. <laughs> Can we call them doubler plates? Doubler like plates. We are calling them <laughs> doubler plates. Until now. Yeah, right. I'm just telling you what Francis gusset called them. Plates. He called them gussets. Yeah. Mmm, matron, my gusset plates <laughs> going funny. <laughs> right. Good. So, what's the ratio then? Two to one. Powder to water. So you're going to scoop out Two powder into that. that dish. Yeah. Weigh it. Weigh it. And then that'll give us, we can half that to get the amount of water. That's right. And then mix them together. Yep. So is it water to powder or powder to water? Powder to water. Is it? Well, we'll add the water to the powder. But it is water, water to powder. Water to powder. Right. Okay. okay. Shall I pour? Real? Yeah, pour. <coughs> So there's a hundred. I reckon we'll get 200 of this to 100. That'll give us 300 milliliters. Yeah. Something like that. Grams. 300 grams. So let's go 200. Okay, that's 200. Mm. Maybe coconut. Yeah, have coconut too. Yeah. After making enough glue to fill the first jar, we had to clean our equipment so that we could make another batch to fill the second jar. Of course, we could have brought two trays. Anthony brought some tack rags with him. These are just bits of cloth that are impregnated with something that grabs onto the dust in the grain um, after we've been sanding and pulls it out. It gives a nice clean surface, um, gives the glue the best chance of adherence. So now it's time to start working with the aero ply, that's the 1.6mm aero ply. Uh, we need to cut that into shapes, uh, oblong shapes, to fit into the rebates that, that we cut on the end of the wing spars. Uh, so I'm uh, just straightening an edge up here, making sure we've got a, a good reference edge to work from. So I'm using the number 5.5 to do that, whilst Anthony does a great impersonation of a really big clamp. Just marking off the width of the first piece directly from the wing spar. Extending that mark uh, full width parallel to the edge that we just created. Now the best way to use a, a knife against a straight edge without risking cutting your fingers off is to keep a good tight grip of the knife but hold it vertical, absolutely vertical, with a very light downward pressure and the lightest possible um, horizontal pressure towards the straight edge. Uh, this makes sure that if it ju does jump it'll be so light it's not going to get your fingers. We've all been there, we've all done that and it ruins your day. So light cuts, multiple cuts. That's the rule with a knife. Anthony's just marked off for length directly from the spar and then it's easy to square it across and then cut it out. Remember to hold the knife vertically, otherwise if it slips it will shoot into your thumb. But So we had to cut out um, 
eight of these in total, four smaller ones for the two rear spars, one on each side, and uh, four larger ones for the main spars. Here Anthony's using the tack rag again, he has sanded them already, uh, just using that tack rag to make sure they're absolutely clean before we apply the glue. The final thing we have to do before we can actually glue anything up is to make some calls. Now, calls go on the outside, on the top of the aero ply, uh, and then we can apply clamps to that and it spreads the load throughout the whole aero ply. Uh, just keeps it flat and prevents bubbling. So we found some pieces of old floorboard that I had lying about and here I'm using the scrub plane uh, quite aggressively to take off the, um, the groove side of the tongue and groove of those floorboards and I'm finishing off with a number five and a half here. Now the reason that we're doing this is we want the calls to be only a little bit bigger than the actual aero ply. Uh, that means we can get the clamps right into the into the middle where we want them. If they were too wide, uh, we might not get to the exact position. So we're taking the time to do that. Of course, we needed eight pieces of aero ply. We also need eight calls. So there's quite a lot of work ahead of us in the next hour or so. I'm using the five and a half as a jack plane here, which means I've backed off the frog to open the mouth up. This allows for a much thicker shaving to come through. Now the reason that we're using the plane to dimension these calls is that we only have to take five or six millimetres off. So with a thick shaving it's quite often a lot easier to do that with a plane than it is with a saw. This is a sample of uh, one of the glue ups. Uh, we have here um, one of the rear spars and we've already glued a doubler plate onto the other side and now we're doing the remaining side. Now this glue, Aerolite, uh, comes in two components. This is component number one, which is the actual glue, but it won't harden on its own. You have to use a hardener, that's the second component. So we apply the glue to one, uh, one side of the glued surface, and the hardener goes on the other side, in this case the doubler plate. Then when you bring them together, the reaction takes place and uh, the glue hardens in not too long, maybe five to ten minutes. So you don't actually have that much open time as it's called. Open time is the time you have to move the parts around to get them positioned c correctly. Um, so we, we don't have to move too fast, but uh, we don't want to get it set, otherwise we're in trouble. So Anthony's just making sure that he works the glue component uh, into every nook and cranny as far as he can. The glue part, uh, component one, is semi-thixotropic, which means it spreads itself out to a certain extent. This is component number two, the hardener. It's called Aerolite GBPX hardener. It's uh, highly flammable and it's corrosive. It's in fact an acid. It smells a bit like ammonia. You definitely don't want to breathe that stuff in. If you look there, there's a UN number 1866. UN stands for United Nations and uh, there is a dangerous goods classification system and that number defines this substance as a resin that's flammable. There's another part component to that system called the class. Um, this is in class 3 which is flammable and class 8 which is corrosive. So Anthony's brushed it onto the doubler plate and uh, and put it straight onto the glue. So now it will they'll be reacting instantly and beginning to harden. However, they're still a little, little bit slippery for a short period of time. We're going to be putting the calls top and bottom. Now these calls uh, are not the ones we made earlier. These are simply off cuts from the rear spars when we cut them to length. They just happen to be um, exactly the right size for our purposes. Now the difficulty here is that the glue it, it is still moving, the, the doubler plate can move around in the glue, so we've got to try and um, get these positions so that when we put little clamps on it doesn't move them out of position. Anthony holds the calls in place and I come in with the wrong clamp. This one's too small, don't bother with it, it's too small. Anthony then has to get the correct size, the larger clamp. and. Uh, and I come back in with a small one again. You know, isn't that the definition of crazy? Doing something over and over, expecting a different result. Anyway, we finally get, uh, four, oh, he's got the idea now. There's the correct size clamp. Finally, we get four clamps on. 
Um, and then there's a period of uh, trial and error trying to get these doubler plates um, glued in the correct position. There's a small window of opportunity where they begin to grab and we've got a little bit of flexibility with moving them but if we get past that window then they'll be stuck in their own position so um, we need to get them absolutely right so this is why we're um, they see it moving there yeah that, that's actually okay that's in the position we want so now we can proceed to proceed to apply the rest of the clamps and then this end won't matter yeah right so that looks pretty neat so it's just the same process with the main spars. Uh, apply component number one, the glue. Component number two, the hardener. Place in position and apply some clamps. Uh, this is the first double plate on this wing spar. So after clamping it, we just left it to set whilst we did the first double plate on um, the other main spar. And then we come back and turn them over, take the clamps off and put the second doubler plate on. Then we can get the calls on and clamp up. These are the calls that we made earlier. Could do with more clamps in the middle, maybe some of your big clamps, I think. We decide we're not happy with the position of one of the doubler plates, so we decide to take the clamps off and see if we can move it. Okay, well, let's just adjust it a little bit. Is it going off? It's just gone off the edge. Oh yeah. It's stuck solid. Well that was the final glue up on the last main spar and um, after that we stacked them up and left them for oh, a, a good couple of weeks before we took the, the clamps off. Unfortunately um, I forgot to switch the camera on for that um, exercise but it doesn't matter, it's just taking clamps off. And then we left them for uh, another week or so um, just to make sure the glue was fully cured. Um, so that was that for the glue up. Um, I have to say that when we took the calls off, everything was nice and flat. Um, each doubler plate had excess hanging over the edges, which is what we wanted. Uh, also quite a bit of excess glue as well. So in the next episode, um, we'll start off by uh, trimming those doubler plates flush with the, with the spars and getting rid of the excess glue. Uh, and we'll also check them for accuracy and uh, actually they were accurate and there's no point in beating about the bush. If they weren't, we'd we'll be in deep trouble. We'd have to take them all off and do them again. But the, the wing spar brackets fitted on very tightly, uh, um, but uh, not too tight. So that was all good news. So also in the next episode um, about wing spars, we'll be moving on to gluing up the doubler plates further up the spars that take the, uh, the bolt holes for the wing struts. Now, um, we did run out of um, 1.6 millimeter aero ply so we couldn't do any more work on that um, before this the end of this video and uh, also we discovered that the ply required for though some of the doublers at least on the main spars was um 3 sixteenths is it 3 sixteenths no it's 4.7 millimeters so yeah that's about 3 sixteenths in, in american so um that's what we'll be doing next time it's difficult to get these videos um, 
in any kind of quick succession because um, I have holidays, Anthony has holidays, and he's also an, a, an active Jet 2 pilot, so he's quite often working for days on end, and then I'm doing something when he's not working. So um, we're just taking our time with it, though. Um, so thank you for watching this episode, and I'll see you next time on Mr. Lynn's Workshop. <laughs>